Okay, well, thank you so much for um, coming, coming along this evening. I know you haven't travelled very far, but um, tonight's um, talk is the Stephen Matilda Wars, which is a very complicated talk to give. Um, I will try and slow down on, on these Matildas. I think if you do the counting, you'll count at least eight Matildas in the talk. But the two we're interested in tonight is um, the Empress Matilda, who is the daughter of Henry I, and Queen Matilda, who is the wife of King Stephen. So it is a little bit complicated. Before we start, I'm just going to give you a little bit of history, which you probably all know anyway. So the talk is too many Matildas. So the Norman kings of England, um, 1066 to 1154, were top left, William the Conqueror, his second son, uh, William Rufus, his third son, Henry I, and uh, William the Conqueror's grandson is, was Stephen. All of them were complete and utter waste of space as far as I'm concerned. Um, we haven't got time to go into why, but there we go. Um, the three brothers, Robert was the eldest, and um, Robert and William, William Rufus and Henry, absolutely despised each other. There's one instance on Mont Saint Michel where uh, William and, and uh, Robert tipped a, a full chamber pot of urine over the head of, of their brother Henry, and there was a big scuffle. They drew their swords and uh, Duke William, or William the Conqueror, had to intervene. So there was no love lost between all three of them. Now, uh, when William the Conqueror died, Robert inherited the Duke, Dukedom of Normandy. William Rufus, William II, became King of England. Henry, the third son, inherited um, money and some land but no, no title, which didn't go down too well. William uh, Rufus was killed in the New Forest on uh, August 1100. Still not convinced whether that was an accident or an assassination. So Walter Tyrrell um, rode to the coast and was never apprehended um, by Henry at all. So that is still open, but it was, he was murdered or it was an accident. Um, when Rufus fell in the New Forest, Henry, his brother, did not even bother to make sure that his brother um, was conveyed to Winchester. Um, poor Rufus's body was stripped of its clothes and it was left to a lowly uh, charcoal burner to move uh, the King of England on this rickety cart to Winchester. Henry rode straight to Winchester, where the treasury was, the treasury of England. And it was probably kept um, somewhere in, in the castle at Winchester, which some of you know we actually lost in 1154, um, when it was totally destroyed. Sorry, 1654. Now, um, the treasurer of the treasure, the keeper of the treasury of Winchester um, was told that Robert would become King of England on William the Conqueror's death. So he questioned um, Henry's right to claim the throne and the treasury. And we have this document here, but uh, Henry drew his sword and declared that he would suffer no upstart to cause the ill-founded delay in seizing his father's scepter before he could. And he was crowned in Westminster Abbey on Sunday the 5th of September 1100. Um, Henry married Edith. Now Edith really was a diplomatic marriage because Edith can trace her ancestry right back to Edmund Ironside. And Edmund Ironside could trace his ancestry right back to Serdic, the first Saxon king of Wessex. And like a lot of the English ladies, once they were married, they changed their name 
to a Norman name rather than an English name. So Edith became Matilda, but not our Matilda. That's why she's in yellow. This is Portsmouth. It wasn't around in 1100. Uh, well, it was around, but not like that. Um, this is William the Conqueror with his eldest son, Robert, and his half-brother, Bishop Odell, there on the left. And uh, Robert thought he could claim the throne of England. So Robert lands in Portsmouth in 1101 to claim the throne of England. He travels towards London and is met at Alton by Henry, who has a much larger army than Robert's. So there was a treaty laid down in the Treaty of Alton in 1101, where Robert was allowed to return to Normandy as its duke, and Henry was, was stayed here as King of England. In 1104, Henry goes to Normandy, captures his brother, Robert, who is brought back to England and imprisoned, first of all, at Devizes um, for 20 years, where his eyes are put out, he's blinded, and later he was moved to Cardinal Castle, where he died in 1134 in his 80s. So you see, um, these brothers did not get on at all well, and Henry was quite lethal. So I have no sympathy for Henry whatsoever. That's Cardiff Castle, where Robert was imprisoned. And his tomb is in Gloucester. On his deathbed, he wanted to be buried in England. So he was moved from Cardiff across the Severn and buried at Gloucester. Henry and Matilda have two legitimate children. Matilda, who became the Empress Matilda, she's in blue. And from now on, when you see the blue Matilda, is the Empress Matilda. She was born in 1102 and a son, William, was born a year later in 1103. She was either born in Winchester, but more likely a place called Sut Courtney near Abingdon. And normally you could go to Sutton Courtney and see part of the estate where we think she was actually born. Henry also has at least 20 illegitimate children, including this one in blue here, Robert, later Earl of Gloucester, the half-brother to the Empress Matilda. He's a very important player in the story. Robert, through marriage, gained estates in France, Glamorgan and Gloucester, where in 1122, Henry created the Earl of Gloucester. Stephen, uh, he was the grandson of William the Conqueror. He was born in Blois in France, the son of Stephen and Adela of England, who was the daughter of William the Conqueror. So this is where Blois is, or Blois is, uh, down here next to Montmain and Anjou. And they do have um, a part of this palace goes back to the 12th century, especially the bottom part there. The rest is, is uh, much, much, much later. It's also where Stephen's brother, uh, Henry de Bois, was born. So 1106, Stephen is sent to the English court um, to stay with his uncle, King Henry I. He became Count of Mortain and in 1115, he married in red, Matilda. So she's Queen Matilda, the wife of King Stephen. Uh, it does get a little bit complicated. Henri de Bois, now in, in history, he's one of the characters I would love to know and ask him to come to dinner. He was very, very crafty. Um, very, very intelligent man, and he survived the civil the civil war between Stephen and Matilda by keep changing sides, picking the right time to change sides. But he died fairly peacefully in Winchester, um, perhaps at Bishop's Waltham. Now he he was a brother of King Stephen. He was abbot of Glastonbury and at the same time Bishop of Winchester. 
At the age of 23, he was a multi-millionaire with vast estates all over the south and up into the Midlands of England. They were the favourite nephews of Henry I. Matilda, when she was only eight, she was betrothed to the Emperor Henry V of Germany. She left uh, England in 1110 and spent 16 years uh, as the Empress uh, to the Emperor of Germany. She married Henry V at Worms Cathedral um, before, just before her 12th birthday. There were five archbishops, 30 bishops and five dukes to the wedding ceremony. And Matilda had 27 dresses to choose from for the dress for the, for the wedding. And she had so many clothes and so many jewels. At the age of 12, she was thoroughly, thoroughly spoiled. That's worms. Um, Henry I's first wife, um, Edith, died in 1118. And uh, three years later, um, she, he marries Adelisa of Louvain. Um, again, she comes into the story when we get down to Arundel. Now, this is the tragic um, day, the 25th of November, 1120. Two ships left Normandy to return to England. One ship carried the king, accompanied by uh, his son's new bride, Matilda Anjou. Um, that's the birth and uh, that's the picture of it. The other ship, the white ship, was owned by Thomas Fitzstephen, whose father had carried William the Conqueror to England in 1066. The passengers and crew were celebrating the wedding of Prince William to the other Matilda. Large amounts of wine were consumed um, before they sailed and uh, they got extremely drunk. So they left in the dark, very drunk. They rowed as far as they could to catch up with King Henry's ship, but just outside the harbour, the ship hit the rocks with, with terrifying results. And that's the, the white ship disaster, where so many people were killed. Um, William, his only legitimate son, was drowned, along with 300 other souls, including several members of the royal family. And um, Henry, one of, um, William, one of Henry's legitimate sons, Richard, was drowned. And Matilda, another Matilda was drowned, an illegitimate daughter, and his niece was also drowned. And it said that once the news reached Henry, he never smiled again. The only man to survive the sinking was um, this person in the sea here waving his arm. He was a butcher, and his woolen fleece acted like a, a life vest and kept him afloat. The only man to not bother to go on board was Stephen, Stephen of Loire. According to Audric Vitalis, he was suffering from a bad bout of diarrhea and did not sail. It's always a bit suspicious to me. The Emperor Henry V died. Uh, he died childless. So uh, Henry recalled his daughter Matilda to England in 1126 and she hadn't seen England uh, for 16 years. I think that made her about 28. Now with the death of William, Henry's only legitimate heir was his daughter Matilda. And Henry decided to make all the barons and knights swear oaths of allegiance that when he died, his daughter Matilda would become Queen of England. There were oaths sworn at Windsor and Westminster, Christmas 1126, repeated at Oxford 1127, uh, Winchester 1128, and Bristol 1129. 
Now, Matilda uh, was taken by her half-brother, Robert of Gloucester, across to marry this Geoffrey of Anjou. She was 25 and he was only 15. And we know Matilda, she used to be living in great prosperity with all these dresses and jewels and, and, and all sorts of wonderful things. When she married um, this person here, Geoffrey of Anjou, she de described as living in a barn. It was pretty run down. But they were married 1128 at Le Mans. A few years after the words, um, a son, Henry, was born. Now, he became Henry II, so he's very, very important. A second son, Geoffrey, was born in 1134, and she, Matilda almost died in childbirth. She was critically ill for several, several months, if not a year. Henry dies in 1135. He died, like a lot of the Norman kings from the bazaar, um, he died from eating the surface of lampreys. And the picture on the left there, he's carrying this, effort, this image of Reading Abbey, which he founded um, it's himself. He was buried in 1136. And that's Reading Abbey today. That's the plaque. We're still having to try and find out where he's actually buried in the Abbey. Stephen, 1135 to 1154. This is William and Marjorie writing here. When Stephen was king, there was wretchedness in the land. Earth bore no corn. They said openly that Christ and the saints slept. We suffered 19 winters for our sins. Now we, we know as an archaeologist we know that in this period um, there was severe drought in England. When you look at the dendro dendrochronology evidence you can see the tree rings they hardly moved in this period of, of our history so it wasn't all Stephen's fault. Now when he died of course um, the barons and some of the bishops decided we don't want this uh, woman Matilda and um, they'd rather give it to a man, Stephen. Of course, at the moment, Empress Matilda is not here. Stephen um, left Boulogne to sail to, to England, but Robert of Gloucester refused him permission to land. He refused also permission to let Stephen into Canterbury. So that's the two, Dover and, and Canterbury. Stephen was, however, welcomed by the Londoners and he entered London and support for him grew in strength and also rode to Winchester again to gain the treasury. The treasury was at Winchester for many, many, many years and Stephen was crowned, you see there, at Westminster on the 22nd of December 1135. In the Great Hall, we do have this Victorian stained glass window uh, of Stephen. So 1137, Robert of Gloucester leaves England to support the Empress Matilda, who is still extremely ill um, and unable to travel at that time. 1139, um, the bishops, uh, three of the bishops Henri de Bois' favourite bishops were uh, arrested. They argued, the barons argue amongst themselves, and Stephen arrests uh, Roger, Bishop of Salisbury, Alexander, Bishop of Lincoln, and Nigel, Bishop of Ely. I don't know why they were arrested. That really infuriated Henri de Bois, and he summons a synod to Winchester to discuss the matter. Meanwhile, back at Arundel Castle now, Henry's second wife, Adelisa of Louvain, um, invites the Empress Matilda to come over to um, Arundel to claim her, throne, her claim to the English throne. 
So the 22nd of September 1139, Matilda lands at Arundel with Rob de Gloucester and the 148 knights. Doesn't sound a vast army, but they were pretty professional knights. And we know at, at Arundel Castle that the, uh, we have the Norman Mott and Bailey in the centre and the tower to the left is called the Matilda Tower, where she probably stayed. So Robert of Gloucester leaves the Empress at Arundel and heads towards uh, Bristol, um, gaining support from uh, barons and, and soldiers as he goes. And Stephen then blockades Arundel, trapping Matilda inside. This is the, what remains of Bristol Castle today, but it was quite a, quite a powerful castle, as you can see there. Now, Henri de Bois, as you'll hear in the story, he keeps on supporting one and then supporting the other. But for some reason, Stephen lets Henri de Bois um, escort Matilda from Arundel um, to meet Robert of Gloucester at Bristol. So 1139, um, there were battles, sieges, towns and castles and where villages were destroyed, abbeys were destroyed, but nothing really happened in that year, 1139, 1140. But at Lincoln, um, Stephen was captured at the Battle of Lincoln, 2nd of February, 1141. He's taken to Gloucester and Paul appears before the Empress, where he's then sent on to Bristol. This is where we almost make it. She's declared not Queen of the English, she's declared Lady of the English, 1141. There's a great conference at Oxford where the church um, really accepts Matilda as the rightful heir to the Crown of England. There were processions at Oxford, Wilton and Reading. Uh, Matilda comes to Winchester, 3rd of March 1141, in a triumphal procession. She comes in through the West Gate and along the High Street towards the cathedral, and the city's full up with supporters of her. This is a, a little street that you can see where you are now. This is the road going down to the uh, cathedral. Laura Ashley in the background here. And not many people read this plaque, but halfway along, there's this plaque saying this is the site of St. Thomas Gate, which went across there. This was the main gate into the cathedral. And uh, we've got one nearby I can show you, which is the one at Salisbury. It would be very identical to the one that was, was at Winchester. So the cathedral we see today, um, it looked a bit different when Matilda came. So she, she enters the cathedral in 1141 with Henri de Bois on her right hand side, the Bishop of St. David on her left. Also present were those bishops who were imprisoned, Nigel of Ely and Alexander of, of Lincoln. So at least four bishops were there. Now the original cathedral had two twin towers and we're told that so many people were waiting to see the Empress Matilda, they climbed up these towers to get a better view and a lot of the building stone collapsed. It was a poor state of repair. Um, now if you go down towards the um, cloisters of Winchester, here on the wall you, you see this um, old part of the tower. So she's declared Lady of the English and um, the Archbishop of Canterbury also uh, recognises that title. This is where things start going wrong for her in 1141 at London. She enters Westminster in June 1141 waiting to be crowned Queen of England. But she totally mismanaged the situation. Because the Stephen had spent most of the money uh, in the coffers, 
she started demanding taxes off the cities of London, which wasn't a wise thing to do at that particular time. Meanwhile, down in Kent at, at Faversham, Stephen's wife, Queen Matilda in red, begs the release of Stephen, which is refused. So Stephen's wife raises an army in Kent and heads towards London. On the outskirts of the capital, they start setting fire to villages to alarm the citizens inside the walls of London, which worked extremely well. They ring the church bells and let the forces of, of Stephen's wife, Queen Matilda, into the capital. The Empress Matilda is forced to flee and she rides to Oxford. So Henri de Bois at this time decides it's best now to support his brother Stephen. He rides down to Winchester and uh, defends the um, Bishop's Palace against the Empress Matilda. This is Wolfsey Palace from the top of St. Giles' Hill, bottom right there. And as far as we know, the only wall that was rebuilt in this particular part of the 12th century was this one here, blocking uh, the entrance from the gateway into the palace. And according to uh, Martin Biddle, this wall here was the only wall constructed during the reign of King Stephen. Empress Matilda comes back in, she, she enters uh, with a besieging force to take control of the castle. She um, tries to capture Henri de Bois at uh, Wolsey, but as the Empress came into one gate, Stephen Henri de Bois uh, went out another gate. But closely pursued by Stephen's wife, Queen Matilda. So she um, arrives in Winchester, she sets her forces up around the walls, blocks all the gates, and on August the 2nd, the, the city is, is fired. We think the land between the High Street and to the south of the High Street was destroyed in a fire of uh, 1141, the Battle of Winchester. So according to the reports, we had 23 out of the 50 odd churches burnt down south of the High Street. St Mary's Abbey, which is near the um, Guildhall, and perhaps Hyde Abbey were also destroyed in the Battle of Winchester. This is Abbey Gardens. And you can see when we do have a, 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 a summer, we can see the parch marks a part of the Abbey and coming through the grass here. But uh, the local archaeologists um, back in 1982, dug the remains of St. Mary's Abbey up, which is just to the east of the Guildhall, and they did find evidence um, of a fire in the 12th century in the undercroft of the freighter range. So it appears that the Abbey of St. Mary's was damaged during the Civil War. Now this is the site of the Royal Palace and you see that the, the church here, the whole of this area we think was destroyed in the Civil War, uh, uh, the, the Battle of Winchester, 1141. And the um, St. Lawrence uh, Church was damaged and opposite nearly we have remains of the palace of the Norman Kings. That too was uh, destroyed by fire in 1141. Going over to Hyde Abbey, um, this is very debatable. As some of you know, I helped dig on the site of Hyde Abbey. Uh, it says here it was damaged in 1141. Um, there is a report saying it was burnt in 1141, um, but we've not found evidence yet of any fire at Hyde Abbey. We have this verbal report that the great gold altar cross uh, of King Canute and Queen Emma was given originally to Newminster and it was transferred to Hyde in 1110 and it said it was melted down in the fire of 1141. And that's a report from um, the, you see the page here with Emma and Canute and you see here where it came from, the British Library. 
So the London militia um, troops supporting Queen Matilda sacked Winchester. They looted the shops and the homes, uh, as well as many, many uh, churches. The spoils and captives were taken away from the city. So um, on 1143, Henri de Bois called an assembly to Winchester to reach a permanent settlement concerning the churches built, especially around St. Lawrence's and the Royal Palace site. Now, according to Derek King's survey down here, survey of medieval Winchester, he can only find three churches that had disappeared in this um, Battle of Winchester. So was it exaggerated how much damage was done or are the records just not there? We know a lot of central Winchester was burnt. Now we, we know that, um, again, Werrell was set on fire and it said it might have been a di diversionary tactic to allow the Empress Matilda to flee Winchester. And she fled out of the castle there on September 14th and headed west uh, towards um, Bristol. Now we go back to this quite a fascinating story of Stockbridge. Stockbridge um, is uh, a medieval work, local Heidich um, village or town. This, this is built on, on causeways uh, with ease. And uh, these plots are medieval Burbage plots, but it was the main route from um, Winchester towards the West Country. And uh, Robert of Gloucester uh, led a rearguard action to allow Matilda to cross over those withies and, and head towards the West. Um, Robert of Gloucester was captured by the forces of Queen Matilda and taken to Rochester Castle. But before he did that, there is this old church in Stockbridge with a, a door here. And inside the church, there's another door. And according, according to um, local tradition, Robert of Gloucester sought sanctuary by hanging on to the door handle um, before he was captured. And another story tells us the door was taken off as hinges by the uh, forces of Queen Matilda, taken outside and Robert was arrested. But probably no truth in it at all, but it's a nice story. So she heads towards Devizes first of all, but she's very, very weak, she's very tired. So she turns towards Lovershaw for relief. And the castle at Lagershaw was more like a hunting lodge and was owned by John Fitzgilbert, but the Queen and Matilda found it sorrowing and downcast. And that's all that's left of Lagershaw Castle today. And she wrote, she uh, heads for uh, Devizes, um, where she arrives half dead. After resting, she was carried on towards Gloucester. That's Devizes Castle. Now, 1141, there was another treaty signed at Winchester. This is the Treaty of Winchester signed that um, Robert of Gloucester will be exchanged for King Stephen. So we're back to square one and the Empress Matilda make, uh, makes Oxford her, her base for the duration of the war. Robert of Gloucester was sent by the Empress Matilda to seek support from her husband, Count Anjou, Count Geoffrey of Anjou. Eventually he comes back with 52 ships and 300 knights, along with the young Prince Henry, who eventually became Henry II. Uh, at Oxford Castle. Now, um, Again, Matilda escapes Oxford Castle. This very famous story that um, she, it, she escaped in a snowstorm, walking over a frozen river Thames, wrapped in white clothing. And then she secures herself at Wallingford. So this is from Cassell's History of England. 
you see the Yankers wrapped in white clothes, crossing the Thames and escaping uh, Oxford. At Wallingford, it was a big crossing point of, of the Thames and it had one of the strongest castles in England. And if you go to the site today, there's just a few lumps and mounds left up. It, it must be worth excavating at some time. So we, um, the Civil War continued as a castle war. Stephen uh, was almost captured at Wilton in 1141. Robert Augusta died in 1147 and the Empress um, retreats back to Normandy in 1148 and she never comes back to England again. For five years, the war continues. The country is in total turmoil. We have the famine for these 19 years. There were vast desertions on both sides and people are actually sick of the war. And then 1152, Matilda dies, Queen Matilda dies, and she's buried at Faversham, which King Stephen had founded. And then 1153, Prince Henry, now Duke of Normandy and Count of Anjou, lands in England with 32 ships, 140 knights, and 3,000 mercenaries. Henri de Bois comes back on the scene again. Um, the forces meet at Lincoln, Wallingford and Winchester. By now, uh, everyone's fat, fed up with the war. They're so fatigued with no will to continue. And Henri de Bois made himself a mediator between Prince Henry and King Stephen for the establishment of peace. So we, to restore peace, we have another treaty of Winchester it was set down that when Stephen died, Henry, the son of the Empress Matilda, would become King of England. Um, we don't know where it, it was um, agreed, probably maybe at the Great Hall at Winchester. Now, Eustace, we have this term, useless Eustace, uh, the son of, of Stephen, he refused any peace deal and went on the rampage up through Cambridgeshire, where he mysteriously died on the 17th of August, 1153. And then um, Stephen dies at uh, Dover with another strange uh, uh, death, an old discharge from hemorrhoids. And Stephen was buried back in Faversham with his wife um, and his son, um, at Faversham Abbey. Again, we, we've never really dug much at Faversham Abbey to find that. And then Henry II crowned a King of England at Westminster Abbey, uh, 19th of December, 1154. And I must say, he was no better than the Norman kings. With the disaster of Thomas of Becket and his sons, um, Richard and John, and his lovely wife, Eleanor of Aquitaine. But anyway, um, uh, finally, we did have peace. It came to the country and it took a long, long time to restore peace right across the country.